Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we're going to be doing a top 8 video of my, what I think are the top 8 best sets, Yu-Gi-Oh! main sets, to ever come out in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! These are the core sets that we get every single year and every couple of months. We're going to go over my, what I feel like are the top 8 best. Now I do have a piece of paper in front of me with some information, so I may be looking down at my piece of paper from time to time, but... Really, I was trying to make this a top 10 video, but I really felt like the good sets that were like, this is definitely a good set, this was definitely a good set. I really felt that it was just, you know, eight sets that I could definitely pinpoint with a very good sets um, in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! that just stand out from the rest, you know, to some degree. So without further ado, guys, we'll get into this top eight video. Um, I do want to apologize, guys, I'm not recording outside. They're cutting grass right now, so that's why you hear background noise and the weather's getting kind of dreary, so I want to record indoors for right now. So without further ado, guys, let us get to this top eight video. So at number eight, guys, we have Duelist Genesis. Now, when Duelist Genesis came out, you know, years and years ago, it feels like, back when Synchros first came out, there was a lot of... I guess you could say upheaval at that time in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Gladiator Beast were one of the good decks. Uh, you had uh, Dad Return uh, was a deck. Teledad wasn't out yet. That was didn't come out later. To Synchros came out, but you had Dad Return. You had uh, um, Light Swarms were a thing. Gladiator Beast was still a thing. War Chariot come out in Duelist Genesis 2, which is another good card. But that card introduced Synchros. And we really didn't have another mechanic in the game till Synchros. I mean, yes, we had Contact Fusion and GX, but that was still fusioning. Uh, Synchros introduced a completely new mechanic and revolutionized the extra deck altogether. Um, if the extra deck used to be called the Fusion deck, and you literally at one point in time you had a limit, you had an unlimited amount of monsters you could play the extra deck. But Synchros changed all that and made the extra deck not just for Pacific archetypes that could use it like Glad Beast and you know heroes and cyber dragons that really just used the extra deck and other little things you used to use with you know Magical Scientist and Cyber Cistern. Um, it made it more into a toolboxy type of thing where you could use you know a lot of low level monsters and build up to these big boss monsters that you could summon from your extra deck. It really revolutionized the game when Duelist Genesis came out. I mean you had Stardust Dragon you had a uh, red um, Archfiend Dragon, which when it came out initially was actually not a bad card. I mean, Stardust Dragon, people forget, when that card came out, people wanted that card banned. They thought it was too OP. And I mean, like, a lot of the community thought that. But on top of that, you had things like War Chariot that came out, which really revolutionized Glad Beast. I think we had, as a TCG exclusive, I think it came out, Charge of the Light Brigade came out in that set, I believe. Um, what other things I got here that came out? You had Stardust, you had Goyo Guardian, which came out. You had War Chariot, and yes, you definitely had Charge of the Light Brigade. That literally brought Light Swarms up a tier and just made them ungosh, you know, ungodly. Um, it, it was such a good set that made the decks that were already already in the format better and introduced synchros like Stardust and Goyo Guardian, which Goyo Guardian was banned for a long time because it was such a powerful card. I mean, in the synchro era, if you played in that era, what were some of the best synchros? You had Bryonic, you had Trish, you had Goyo Guardian, Stardust Dragon, Thought Ruler even came out in Duelist Genesis, which was actually, when it came out, was just as good as Goyo Gar uh, just as good as Stardust Dragon for a level 8 Synchro Monster. So there was a lot of good things that came out of Duelist Genesis, so that's why it makes it as my number 8. The number 7 we have is Pharaonic Darkness. This came out a little bit before um, Duelist Genesis, and it had things that came out such as Rainbow Neos, uh, Dark Arm Dragon, which revolutionized the game, um, Allure of Darkness, it even has 6 Samurai support, it had Dark Greffa, Greffer, which we still have seen used today in Dark Synchro decks at, the t at this moment, and Lone Fire Blossom was a freaking rare in the deck. Those are just some of the ones that stick out of that set. I mean, Dark Greffa, great card, it was used all throughout Dad Return, it was used in you know, Dark Synchro and other decks throughout the course of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. I remember when that card originally came out, people thought it was a trash card. Well, that quickly changed the mentality. And it was also using Teller Dad. Uh, you had Allure of Darkness, which is one of the best probably draw get cards in the game, you know, next to Pot of Greed. I mean, that's legal, that is. Uh, because the fact of the matter is you just banish one Dark Monster from your hand, draw two cards. That's 
not that bad. And, and even if you don't have a dark monster in your hand, you can just activate it and hopefully draw it into a dark monster <laughs> and then banish it so you get a plus one. So it's really nice. Rainbow Neos has its own little thing and Dark Arm Dragon. What can you say about Dark Arm Dragon, guys? It's, it, I mean, this card, if you did not live through th when Dark Arm Dragon was at two and three, and you know, this set really just power creeped the game a lot. Uh, when it upon initial release and if you live through those times you remember how bad they were <laughs> i can't emphasize that enough at number six guys we have pharaonic's servant now pharaoh's servant excuse me pharaoh's servant i, I keep calling it pharaonic servant for some bloody reason throughout my course of my life now this set you know when i originally was making this list i wanted to put this set higher because it was such a good set back in the day it was one of the original sets that came out in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. And it mainly focused on a mixture of just good monsters and good traps. Um, that's what this set is best remembered for. And it is just a good set. You had, coming out of this set, you had Jinzo as a secret, Call of the Haunted, Thousand Eyes Restrict, which literally has its own format, Premature Burial, and Imperial Order, one of the best trap cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, if not one of the best and probably is one of the most powerful cards that even to this day is still very powerful and probably will never ever come off the ban list unless it gets a completely neutered errata. So Jinzo was used for most of, from the day probably Pharaoh's Servant was dropped, it was limited to one, and pretty much it was a good card all the way up to the Synchro era. All through GBs, all through GX, even up into the early Synchro era, before the XYZ era, people were still using Jinzo as a viable tribute monster because Jinzo was that good and could lock down powerful traps like Mirror Force, your Call of the Haunted, whatever, your Sakuretsu Armors, you name it, it could lock it down. You uh, deep prisons, whatever. Then you have Call of the Haunted, which is one of the most versatile cards and one of the best cards that has aged very, very well throughout the course of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Throughout, it, it's literally like an MST type of scenario where yes, it's a trap, yes, it is slow, but it's a very good card that's been at three for a long time now. I mean, it was at one for a long time, but it's just a good staple card that we even use till, you know, till nowadays. You have Thousand Eyes Restrict, which was used heavily in scapegoat for it. A format. You have Premature Barrow, which was a very good card. It was supposed to replace Monster Reborn, which was on the ban list at the time. That card was broken. And you have Imperial Order, which just shut down spells straight up. So, very, very powerful cards there. Uh, next up, we have number five. We have the opposite of what Pharaoh's Servant was. And, I mean, Metal Raiders, yes, it did use traps. Uh, like I know, you know, Mio Force and things of that nature. But I felt that when I look back throughout the course of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history, Pharaoh's Servant was just a little bit better. And next we have Magic Ruler, or as it's now called Spell Ruler because there was apparently a contradiction between Magic the Gathering and us calling spell cards magic cards. Yeah, didn't know that. So if you look at old cards that say magic on it up in the corner, those are legit. <laughs> uh, but Magic Ruler had a lot of powerful cards in it. Um, I mean, <laughs> the list is so long that you would think it would be a top five best set. But let me go over some of these things. You had MST, you had Delinquent Duo, you had Upstart Goblin as a common, Painful Choice, Fools for Century, just to name a couple. You even had Relinquish come out in this set, which at that time in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! was probably the best ritual monster out in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because up until Magic Rulers, <laughs> what did we have for rituals? Hungry Hamburger and, you know, I mean, also I should mention, I believe it was Magic Rulers introduced ritual monsters into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well, which people don't know that actually, but Magic Ruler did introduce ritual monsters and it induced, introduced things like Hungry Hamburger, uh, the lady with the swords, I forget what it was called at the time, Crab Turtle, OP, if you remember my Crab Turtle deck I did a couple months ago, and it also introduced Thousand Eyes, uh, excuse me, uh, Relinquish, which at the time people played that deck because that card was easily, you could easily get it out, you had things like Sonic Bird, you had other cards out there that could search for your pieces, not as consistent as, you know, Manju and pre-preparation rates like we have now, but it was enough where that you could definitely make a good solid ritual deck and Relinquish could win you games. and. Yeah, that was a good time back then. I mean, look at some of these cards I just mentioned. Snatch and Steal, bam. Most of your Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Painful Choice, bam. Forceful Century, bam. Delinquent Duo, bam. I mean, some of these cards have come off, but they go right back on the ban list all the time. Delinquent Duo, Snatch and Steal. 
And then you have one of the best cards ever to come out in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! MST. So, definitely Magic Ruler, Spell Ruler, whatever you want to call it. One of the best sets in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's why it's my number five. On to my number four. We have Lord of the Tekion Galaxy. This set... I think I made this list like, oh, three, four years ago. This set originally was number one. Uh, or number two, actually. It's gone down because there's been a lot more good sets that have come out since that time. Lord of the Tekken Galaxy, how can I say this? This set completely reshaped the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and literally defined a format for literally a half a year of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you have only been playing the game for the last year or two, or you missed this format, count your lucky stars, you kind of did. I mean, it literally brought dragon rulers into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And you had the baby dragons, and you had Dragostack, and you had the Harpies, which at that time were not a bad deck, really. I mean, they're still a good tier 2 deck, because you had Hysteric Sign, which was OP. Uh, you had... Uh, Harpy's Chandler, great card. You had Harpy's Phantasmal Dragon. You have the Battling Boxer stuff too, which at that time, up until a couple years ago, you know, a couple, you know, about a year ago, was a solid good deck with Lee Yoke and everybody. So I mean, you literally had a, there was a lot of good tier two decks that came out. You even had Mega Phantom Beast come out in this set. You had so many good monsters, and then on top of that, you had the Elemental Dragons. And should we not forget Spellbook of Judgment, one of the bro most broken cards, <laughs> hands down in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! for an archetype that is, came out in this set, along with the Dragon Rulers. Then you also have Kirkleon, which is used, you had Kecleon and Kirkleon, I believe they were called, uh, for your Constellas and for your Evil Swarms, which is a very good card in its own, and there's been many incarnations of that card and other archetypes throughout the years. So, a lot of good cards came out of this set. And you just look at all the supers and all the rares, and there was just a lot of them. You even had, I believe, a Totem Bird even came out of there, which is an okay card nowadays. But there was just a lot of good cards. You had Drago Sack, when it came out, it was a $150 card, going $200. The, the Dragon Rules, which were rares, were three to four bucks a piece. I mean, Spellbook of Judgment was like a $70, $80 card. I mean, the set was ridiculously good and literally defined a format, defined an era, and up until the Dragon Blue was being banned last year. Just, ugh. ugh let's go on. <laughs> number three. Um, we have, for number three, guys, we have Invasion of Chaos. Now, Invasion of Chaos is probably one of my favorite old retro sets. I personally feel like Invasion of Chaos really um, made special summoning no longer special. Up until that time, you had rituals, you had cards that did special summon, but you had to, you know, meet cr criteria. You know, that wasn't that hard to meet sometimes. Like, if I set Gravekeeper Spy, I had to flip it up, get the Gravekeeper Monster. Then you had Invasion of Chaos, which combined some OCG sets, where we got BLS in um, Dark Magician of Chaos. <laughs> oh gosh. The Big Bad Dragon, which I will not mention his name. Chaos Emperor Dragon, yes. We got Fusion, uh, which was pretty much you could banish cards, pay 2,000 life points, get cards. You get the Fusion card. You had other good common cards that came out of this set, which I couldn't find them all, but there's a lot of good ones that came out of this set. There was just so many. I mean, the, the fact that people don't understand, I don't think, is this card created the ban list. There was no ban list. You had a thing called the limited list before this set. This set, these cards, just those three cards individually. Um, I mean, Dark Magician of Chaos was considered slow. And you also had Chaos Sorcerer that came out in this set as well, which on its own was a good card for many years. Um, after the banning of that, you had BLS, which literally defined you know multiple formats. It was a sack card. It's still a good sack card. You had Emperor... Um, it just it, it made special summoning no longer special, I feel like. And it on top of that, this set literally power creeped the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! from like going do 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 do, you know, oh beat down, you know, uh, you know, things of this nature. Okay. <laughs> Cause the game at that time had a lot of broken cards, and when you threw in just free special summons, 
<laughs> it just the game got so powerful. I remember people playing these decks and going to regionals and facing people that have those cards. It wasn't fun. It was not fun. I mean, I had a BLS, and I had uh, right before I got banned a couple months before I got a because um, we didn't know the banless was going to come out necessarily. It, it was something new. We didn't have it. We had a few. It was going to come eventually, like a card game, but it created the banless. It power creeped the game and it made special summoning no longer special. So that's where it's at number three. Number two, guys, we have Duelist Alliance. Now, why do I have Duelist Alliance at number uh, two? Uh, I personally was thinking of making Duelist Alliance number one. I really was thinking of doing that. Um, but there's another set that came out recently that I said, well, I compared to them, I looked at both of them. And I said, yeah, they're just about even, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, but Duelist Alliance could easily be number one in somebody else's book is what I'm going to say. But this is my list, so I put it at number two. You literally have had so many good archetypes. I cannot think of a bad archetype that came out of Duelist Alliance, really. You had Battery Man 9 Volt. You had the BA archetype with Dante and Rubik and Seer and Graf. You had Yang Zings with Baxia. You had Stellar Knight, Teller Knights, an archetype in general. And you had Shadows. Every, oh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, think of that. Every single, and you also had UAs that came out in that set. Uh, so there was a lot of good archetypes. I, I mean, there was not a bad archetype in that entire set. There really wasn't. You had Shadal, Zhang Zings, Burning Abyss, and literally, even now, a two, almost two years later, we still are playing BA. Shadal's are still okay archetype. Yang Zings are getting more support and are still somewhat revel relevant. I mean, what can you say about a set that has that long reaching implications? There's very few sets of the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that have done that. What I'm feeling like is the fact of the matter is that literally that set is, there's only a couple of sets I can think of off the top of my head that have had that long reaching implications. Uh, Invasion of Chaos and probably Phantom of Darkness. But there are so many cards coming out of Duel's Alliance that you guys should know about. It's such a great set. And my number one is Breaker of Shadows. Now I know Breaker of Shadows has only been out for a couple of months. And people may question me on that, you know, should you put Duelist Alliance above Breaker of Shadows? But when I look at Breaker of Shadows, and I saw what came in Breaker of Shadows, if it wasn't for the emergency ban list that Konami put out after a couple of weeks of that set being out, that set, I personally feel like, would have gone down in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! as one of the best sets of all time. Look what, you know, that those pendulum decks were going to do and look how much they just dominated the YCS's they had before the emergency ban list. That, I mean, you had Pendulum Sorcerer, you have Solemn Strike, Trap Tricks with Flazia, which is one of a good, a good XYZ card. On top of that, you have things like Divine Providence, which is good. You had Counter Fairies getting support. You had, I mean, the list goes on and on. And now, should we not forget that Twin Twisters got support in this set? Yeah, Cosmo's got more support that was okay in this set, like Cosmo 10 Can. Uh, you just had good commons and rares to some degree. Uh, it also introduced the new ratios that have made Yu-Gi-Oh cards more cheaper. I mean, you look at all these other sets, they're from the pre-era where we got, you know, a single, you know, a hollow card in every pack. So yes, the card prices may be down. Yes, the fact that the emergency ban list did hinder this set, but if it wasn't for that, this set would be top down, I feel like, one of the best sets ever. Twin Twister is still a great card. Pendulum Sorcerer was a great card. You had the Luster Pendulums. You had um, just so many good cards came out of this set, man. And I feel like it's going to define Twin Twister, Solemn Strike, is one of the best trap cards right now. Traps with Trace of uh, is pretty much a staple in rank four decks with bottomless cards. And then just the fact that Twin Twister is a card and really has to be until Heavy Storm or Harpy's Feather Duster comes back, it's going to be a good card. So a lot of good cards came out of this set. A lot of archetype cards came out of this set. And that's why it's my number one. 
But till next time, guys, tell me what you think down below is your top favorite decks of all time. Until next time, guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling, and I'll see you guys next time. Good luck dueling to all of you. Take care, everybody.